Hello and welcome to the Back Nine Report. My name is Carlos Torres and I'm along with Fred Alvader. Every week we check in on the world of golf to bring you the latest news, insights, analysis, interviews, recaps, previews. Here we cover anything and everything golf. In other words, if it happened in golf, we have it for you. Fred, hi, how are you this week? Hey, Carlos, I'm fantastic. We had a uh, beautiful Chamber of Commerce day up here. We had a beautiful weekend, 4th of July weekend. It was fantastic. I know you did some travel last week. Uh, out there in the western states. I hope you had a good time with that and you're all rested and relaxed and we, we got so much going on here in golf. We got a lot to talk about but the first thing I want to talk about tonight Carlos is that the Mission Golf Journal was published today okay and I want everybody to know that we devoted 10 pages in this issue to talk about the LIV. What's going on? Who's in? Who's out? Who's, who's you know who's causing trouble? Uh, we, we explain it all, the timeline, how this thing has been going on for now for over 19 months. So uh, we covered all, Carlos, and all you got to do is go to michigangolfjournal.com and uh, click on. It's all digital. You can leaf through there, read, uh, read whatever turns you on there, and uh, we think it's a pretty good issue, so check it out. All right, so that's amazing. I mean, and we, we have been talking about the LIV, I think, for what it's been a story for us for a month or a couple a years month, yeah uh, a couple of years but recently it's like every week it's become our bread and butter right now and it's because uh, they are really dominating the news right now it's like pga tour and dp world tour would like them to not talk about them everybody shut up they are not going anywhere but they keep coming and coming and coming they have played already two two tournaments. The last one was in Portland, won by Brandon Grace. And if you believe the players, it was amazing energy from the fans. It was incredible. I mean, if you hear what they were saying, it was just an amazing thing compared to what happened in the other PGA Tour tournament that was there this weekend that nobody's even talking about J.D. Poston winning wire to wire, maybe because there wasn't anybody there, I guess. All the stars were really at the LIV tournament. But for there's a lot of things going on, so we have to talk about that. Yeah, before we get away from the John Deere, uh, you look down at the names in there. I mean, some of the names in there are really oldies but goodies. I mean, they were really scraping the bottom of the barrel to get some guys to fill up their field. Uh, I mean, they had guys that you have not heard of for a while. Um, so with all the guys, and I, I, that get, make, makes a really good tra transition, really, to talk about what's going on right now. You know, next week, we're going to be talking about the Open Championship. So a lot of guys, uh, big names, are starting to make their way to Europe, and a really good time to do that is yesterday and today was the J.P. McManus Pro-Am in Ireland, and uh, that thing draws an unbelievably, uh, just an unbelievable stellar field. Some of the names, just you might know some of these names, Carlos. Uh, uh, Roy McElroy was there, uh, Patrick Canley, Sam Burns, Matt Fitzpatrick. I, I think he won that little U.S. Open thing a little, couple weeks ago. Uh, Dustin Johnson was there. You remember Dustin? He used to play on the uh, PGA Tour. Brooks Kepka was there. He, he used to be pretty good. Bryson DeChambeau, Colin Marikawa, John Ram, Scotty Scheffler, Jordan Speed, Justin Thomas, and oh, yeah, the big cat was there. Tiger Woods was there playing knocking it around, and I mean literally knocking it around. He did not play very well. And uh, Xander Shoffley won this thing, uh, collected a bunch of money for showing up. I can't imagine what it costs to play in this thing. It's got to be, it's, got, it's for the big money guys only. I think you got to have a billion in pocket change before you can even sign up for this thing. But this was kind of like the first mixing of the LIV, PJ Tour, and DP World Tour guys since the U.S. Open a few weeks ago. Uh, like I said, Tiger did not play well either day, but said he intends to play next week at St. Andrews, is just happy to be able to walk and play. Now, Carlos, really big news uh, came out of Europe yesterday. Like I say, the, the media cycle has kind of shifted to Europe because the Open's coming up next week. Um, the serious business is really beginning now. As we've been saying all along, these lawsuits about who's going to get to play where and who's not going to be allowed to play, this that's what's going to happen. These guys, these LIV guys still have eligibility on DP World Tour and on the PGA Tour. They want to use that. They don't want to give that away. So they are now suing. 
So there were 16 LIV golfers that sued the DP World Tour to play when there are, uh, you know, back on the uh, on the DP World Tour when they're not playing in LIV events. So the judge granted suspensions of, you know, of, of holding up, not allowing them to play of three players, Ian Poulter, Justin Harding, and Adrian Otagi have been temporarily stayed their case as it works through the appeals process in the UK courts. Um, they were suspended and fined by the DP World Tour last month after they competed in the LIV London event without an official release. Um, they will now be eligible to play this week in the Scottish Open. Of course, Ian Poulter was one of the guys who was at the JP McManus this week, and he told reporters, I feel disappointed and offended that I've been suspended from playing golf on a tour that I played for 24 years. DP World Tour uh, Chief Keith Pelly was also there. He declined comment, but said he was disappointed by the outcome from the courts, also warned that this is just a stay a final ruling on their true eligibility to compete in DP World Tour events is still pending until we get working way through the court. So, Carlos, I'm going to stop right there. I, I threw out quite a bit, so I'll let you comment and, uh, on anything that you want to talk about there. Yeah, so this is just the start of what, at the beginning of June, and maybe from the beginning of all this, right, the players, we have talked about the possibility of all these lawsuits coming up. And uh, I was reading an article about some American uh, lawyers saying that that is setting a precedent basically of what is gonna be happening here in the States as well. And the basis of this, the, the PGA tour, because the, the, there was one of these lawyers that was treating, trying a case from a company similar to the case that would be involved with the PGA tour and the players. And he says that, that literally they don't have a, Stella, and I'm going to quote him, a leg to stand on. The reason for that is because- You're talking about the PGA Tour doesn't have a leg. The PGA Tour. Yeah. And that, that's the reason why the, the DP World Tour, the players got to stay. For you to actually start to ban these players from playing there, you have to establish that they are for somehow breaking, first of all, a no-compete clause, which they don't have. Okay. They don't have any, so the players, that's their base of what they're going to, they're, they're actually doing their case. I don't have an incomplete clause. Where is it? Why are you banning me from playing here? There is no legal statute that you have to ban me from playing here in this tour. Okay. I am competing. I am completing all the requirements that you're saying. All that you're saying is that I cannot compete somewhere else. I have the right to compete anywhere else because there is no compete clause here. So they're completing the requirements to be part of that tour and play, be able to play. The other thing is that for them, for the PGA Tour, to be able to complete that enforcement is that they actually need to have a restriction clause in place that is not the one that they're supposedly saying that they need to request a release to be able to play there. Uh, so now I am not a lawyer. I don't understand the legalities of all this. I'm just going over what I have read. And so far, the first case that we see now with Ian Poulter leading the, the charge here on the DP World Tour, of course, that's a different place. But what I'm reading from this guy who is a Florida lawyer and under Florida law, and I'm going to say there that if they want to enforce, I'm going to quote it, to enforce this sort of restriction, they have to pursue a lawsuit against a player to enforce a non-compete agreement that they don't have. So that case, that's not what they're going to do on the style that they have. So we can start thinking that this is going to come uh, and the PGA Tour, if, if that's true, I don't see why the PGA Tour keeps going with this. Other than their moral stand to try to protect their brand and all that is uh, the PGA Tour related thing, circumstances, they don't have anything to stand on. And uh, it's really getting worse. We are still seeing more players we saw Paul Casey, we saw Matt Wolf, and they just keep jumping. And, uh, you know, I, I respect all the players and uh, all the ones that are now mad on the PGA Tour. But honestly, they're mad because they're not part of that big money thing uh, as well. You know, uh, I know and understand that Billy Horschel 
was saying, you know, uh, if you are saying something against uh, the PGA Tour, you're saying it against me and against everybody that's the PGA Tour. And he's correct about that. And so he can respond on that. But the thing is, hey, everybody's free to do what they want. Again, all this is because it's a Saudi-backed league. If it wouldn't be that way, there wouldn't be any conversation in this. I think you're exactly right, Carlos. Uh, the Saudi money gives us kind of a tainted feel. And I, I, I mean, let's talk, I want to go on, let's talk just a little bit about uh, uh, the Portland event that was last week. I, I did watch in a couple of days, actually. Uh, I tried to watch it. I think one time I was able to watch it for about an hour. The other time I turned it off after about a half hour. I just can't stand. It's just constant money, 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 money. That's all they talk about is money, money, money. And then they try to throw in this team thing and they have this scoring pylon like a, like you're at a NASCAR race thing, right? And it's a it's a uh, shotgun start. So you got, you know, players all over the place. Uh, you're not sure exactly what's going on. Uh, it, it's very confusing to an old guy like me, um, I, I have to say. So um, we did have Brooks Kepka, uh, Carlos Ortiz, Patrick Reed, and Bryson DeChambeau in attendance at Portland. Uh, Patrick Perez also had gotten into that field uh, as a new entry for the LIV. Um, Carlos Ortiz made the most of his newfound wealth there with his guarantee for coming over. Plus, I don't think he was too bummed about coming in second. He kind of had the tournament in hand and kind of let it slip away. Brandon Grace made a run there uh, on uh, Sunday and Ortiz faltered. You could tell he just wasn't used to being in that kind of situation. But uh, he still walked away with over $2 million for finishing runner-up. Uh, so that's not too bad. Uh, just in comparison, thus far in the 2022 21-22 season, uh, Carlos Ortiz has teed up in 20 events, missed nine cuts, has made 1.1 million. As but he was well inside the FedEx Cup playoffs at number 85. So he's going to get some bonus money and get to play in the in the uh, in the playoffs. Uh, most would agree that's not a bad year's work for playing 20 times. But he just made over two million. For playing three rounds and he got the guarantee before that he even earned a dime this week so it's just i mean it's just like they're doling out money it's just like here here here's an extra million here here here's a couple million just go ahead and have a good time the pga tour carlos they simply cannot compete with that it just they cannot do that so also we saw the south uh, africans are dominating we had uh, charles schwartz win the first event we had brandon grace win this time let me break down. So they like to talk about money. So let's break down a little bit of some money, okay? Uh, Dustin Johnson and Patrick Reed tied for third. They got two million each for finishing tied for third. Uh, each got one point two million for the third place finish. Plus, they were on the winning team, and they love to talk about the team aspect of LIV on the on the television co uh, uh, commentators. It's unbelievable. So they got they got another 750. So 1.2 plus seven, they got two million bucks each. That's Reed and Dustin Johnson. Taylor Gooch, another member of the team, um, he ended up uh, he got seven hundred and uh, six hundred seventy five thousand for a seventh place plus his 750. So he ended up walks away with 1.4 million. Um, yeah, he was having a good year on the PGA Tour, but you know that's good money just for one event. But the real deal, the real kicker here is that I, I love this one, okay? Patrick Perez, you got to love him. You got to hate him, whatever. I mean, he's been around for a while. He likes to, likes to be a little controversial, you know? He likes to have a good time. He's kind of a party kind of guy. Uh, he finished plus eight, okay? Not, not a real good score at, uh, at Pumpkin Ridge. 34th place, but he pocketed 900K. He got his 158,000 for finishing 34th. Plus, he was a member of the team with Johnson, Reed, and Gooch. And so he gets his cut of 750 grand. So that's $900,000 for finishing 34. That would never happen on the PGA Tour. Just would not happen. Um, I, you know, I, this is what is wrong with the LIV. It's, it's the money. It just, it just drives me crazy. I, I just, I can't get into it, Carlos. I, I'm sorry. I know it's a great deal for these guys. It's a great deal for Patrick Perez. 900K for playing 54 holes of golf. What a deal, okay? Um, if he just has any kind of year and he pockets four or five, $8 million this year, 
What a deal. He's not going to make that over the next three or four years on a PJ tour for sure. So the question that I have for you from all this, um, can anything that is simply just about the money be a sustainable golf tour? I think it's just because we're focusing on the money, money, money thing. Okay. That's what this is being all about. Uh, if we just would get past that and try to see the golf that is there. Uh, so far, I know it's not a, a big thing because not, we don't have the top players. Um, they're just trying to make some product of it. If you see their broadcast, yeah, they're not really re ready for real TV. Uh, <laughs> no. No, I got some more comments about the commentary. So they do have, you know, I like the nice expanded leaderboard that they have better than the one that we see everywhere else. But that's about it. I mean, they do have great camera shots, but they do not have instant replay. So if, uh, unless you really, which you are just expected to see something like, oh, let me see that shot again. Uh, you can't do that. They don't show that. Um, there are some things they, they, they do have to work on that. Uh, like I say, this is, and I am, I've been saying all along, this is the first time for this type of tournaments that league is just starting. You can't expect to be PGA Tour kind of ready. No one is gonna be, okay? So if we're just trying to compare it to make it sure that it's just like the PGA Tour in quality, no one is gonna do that. So that's why, they have to throw all this money to try to get things done, try to bring people in. And if you see the things, the players that are there, and we commented this before, they're the ones that on the PGA Tour are lacking right now the attractiveness of because these are the controversial players. In the top 20 uh, rankings, I believe it's only Brooks and, 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 uh, and Dustin, yeah. the yeah. only ones that are there right now. But Abraham, only, Abraham Andrews, real close. Right and uh, but a top 20 but here, here's my point that i was going to make if you see there as well we're talking about players over 30 years old if you see in the top th to 20 right now in the world only roy mcelroy is the only one over 30 that is not on the liv okay so but at the same time you see all these players are the ones that call all the attention other than tiger uh but why are we talking about? Because everybody likes to talk about Brooks Kepka, all the problems that supposed problems he had with Bryson DeChambeau. Patrick Reed, of course, we talk about him a lot about the controversy with him. Sergio Garcia, Ian Poulter, Lee Westwood. Those are the, the, the people that are right there. That's why we all also talking about them. But money, 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 I think it's just sustainable because they're not going to go anywhere. The money is just going to keep flowing and they're going to keep bringing players. And until the PGA Tour and the DP World Tour sit down and they're going to have to, because the LIV, for what we're seeing, they're not going anywhere. It doesn't matter. And I have, I've said it all along. Time is the best friend for all this, for the LIV, because it's going to start to get accepted. It's going to start, be, they're getting the eyes. So the sponsors are going to start flowing at some point. The TV is going to start, you know, giving their packages and all that. And eventually they're going to have to sit down. And the big thing when this is going to turn is when all these lawsuits that are coming, if the PGA Tour and the World Tour, there hasn't been a loss, but a stay already means, hey, we're going to see this through. So that, that is, that's starting to set some precedent of what we can start seeing in the future. Because otherwise it would have been thrown out and the players would have been out of the cottage open. So right now we're gonna start seeing that in the US and that's gonna be the key. If the PGA Tour starts losing some of those battles, what grounds are they gonna have to hold any of the other players that are just waiting to see if they are gonna be banned or not? Because I assure you, there's gonna be a lot of players that are seeing what you have said. They're seeing them, Brandon Grace, Charles Schwartz will have won two tournaments and they have won in ages. I can do that, I can beat them blind. So yeah, I think that once we see the lawsuits and the results, that's when we are gonna see that negotiation starting by the PGA Tour and the DP World Tour and finally see what's gonna happen. And just to make one final point, uh, you mentioned, uh, 
Jay Monahan or one of his people and Greg Norman or someone from the LIV needs to sit down and start talking a little bit and seeing where they can find common ground and work together a little bit. Um, and I have to tell you, uh, from a bargain position, the LIV and Greg Norman just got a lot stronger after this second event. Uh, with these guys, now they've gone over there and seeing what they're doing, uh, they can run a tournament, they can get this done, they've got the money behind them. The PGA Tour has lost a lot of bargaining power. Uh, and now this is even one more chip with these players. If, if the court rules, these players can go back and forth between LIV and the, and the other world tours uh, with no consequences. Um, the PGA Tour has got nothing. They got nothing to bargain with. So this is they're really they're really down and out right the minute yeah oh and it's sad really sad to see that this is happening because uh you know we talked off off camera before we went live and you mentioned something that is very important you know the comments that like that is going back and forth the Rory McIlroy, the Colin Morgawa, Billy Horschel going at it, and and they have to do it they have to defend their position because they're starting driving to a wedge driving uh, guys that were friends and friendly competitors and they're driving this wedge between all these guys it's 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 just unfortunate yeah and then once they start going back to this tournament where all of them are going to be there i mean we already saw what happened with phil mickelson uh the u.s open he just went in went out and that's it he wasn't even uh talking about it to anybody on the conferences or anything he just went in about his business and went out. Well, it's like they performed a frontal lobotomy on these guys on the LIB tour. They're, they're, I, I, I cannot talk. I have a preset. It was terrible. Well, uh, that's that's the thing. And it's unfortunate because the, it's all about the Saudi issues. And of course, it can't be defended. There's no way they can defend it. All that they can say is, look, yeah, I took the money. What? That's what I want. I want. I'm. A, I live for the money. I live. I like the 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 life that I'm having, and I, I can improve it. And that's what it is. They should just say it. It comes from the Saudis. Yeah, you know what? What I've always said is, hey, yeah, they did what they have done, and what it is. But what about if they are really trying to 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 better their image? Yeah, they're trying to better their image. But what if they? What if it's really true? What if, what if it's really true, you know, and their, actions speak their, much louder than words. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. You know, or they, millions they, of dollars on a golf tour. <laughs> yeah, both things. But the same, at the same time, we've seen some other things that, of course, if you have been Dennis Rodman, right. Or what happened to, to, to tennis the other day to Nick Kyrgios in, in, in Wimbledon, uh, Stefano Tsitsipas, was playing against him, he smashed a ball and, and went over and almost hit a, uh, it didn't hit anybody, but it was close to hitting somebody. And uh, Nick Kyrgios say, you know, you have to take this guy out. I mean, if it would have been me, you would have thrown me out. It's just about who it is. So we see the Saudis trying to do something good and we can't believe it because they have always been bad. You know, I'm not defending them, but I'm saying, what if, what if it's true? Just because we have seen something before, now we're condemning it, we're canceling it, and we're not doing anything. Well, if, for what you're saying, then the sports washing is working. We'll see, we'll see. We'll see what happens, but uh, hey, if it works and they are really trying to do it, all for it, man, all for it. Uh, everybody gets second chances everywhere. Why not them? Yeah. But anyway, uh, any final words before we close? No, nope, I'm good, Carlos. I got some other things, but uh, we're going to run along, and so uh, we need to get out of here. But uh, it, I'm sure we're going we're to continue to talk more about this. There's going to be more stuff come up, and these lawsuits are going to be very interesting and, and uh, something to follow. So, um, you know, we'll be there. We'll cover it for you. Well, next week is the Open, and we're going to bring the European golf guru, Kieran Clark, who lives right there in front of St. Andrews. So who better than him to bring us home with the Open? So. Thank you for joining us this week. It's always our pleasure to bring you the latest in the world golf news and information. So stay with us, subscribe to us. The information is right down there below on the bio. So thank you for joining us. See you next week.